Greetings, my friends. Tis the season, that time of year when the nights get longer, the leaves fall from the trees, and the status quo feels it's okay to act like us. It's when people come into your house and think you've decorated it for Halloween, but little do they know it looks like that all year round. But even within our community, I wonder how many actually know the origins of this sacred day. This channel and the organization, the Sect of the Horn God, is in many ways a bridge between paganism, as it was, not the modern bullshit, and Satanism. What I'm trying to do is uncover the roots of the left-hand path, show a connection between the ancient past and today, and attempt to find that common thread, not only historically, but also psychologically. I do this not to debunk anyone's practice, quite the opposite. I'm attempting to uncover the foundation this belief system was built upon, thus affirming its legitimacy. And in my opinion, nothing better establishes that commonality between the ancient and the modern than the holiday now known as Halloween. Now, I know what some of you on the path are thinking. There's no connection between me, a Satanist or Sinistrist, and those tree-hugging hippie pagans. And to you, my evil companions, I would say you are right. There is nothing in common. This is because the vast majority, not all, but the vast majority of those who partake in modern paganism slash druidism are full of shit. They're not practicing the traditions of old because their outlook is very contemporary. These people have never let go of that light, dark, Judeo-Christian mindset. The ancients didn't have that good, bad, dualistic thinking when it came to their gods and sacred customs. For them, it was about order and chaos. And anyone with even a rudimentary knowledge of history knows how brutal the past was, how life tended to be short and cheap. If you could transport the pathetic weaklings of today back 1,500 years or so to the age of Celtic Druidry and the Nordic heathen cults, these pricks would last but minutes, getting pinned by spears to the trees they attempted to hug. Now, getting back to the theme of this video, most of you already know the origins of Halloween how it was originally called Samhain, and how the Christians changed it into All Saints Day. But do most really understand what Samhain is? To begin with, Samhain, not Sam Hain, was the New Year celebration amongst the Celtic people of Western Europe, predominantly the Gaels. Understand that the Celtic day did not begin at midnight, but at sundown, twilight, that in-between period sacred to the Druids. This is also the beginning of the dark half of the year, ending six months later at sundown on Walpurgisnacht, that which leads into the feast day of Beltania, the beginning of the light half of the year. Now, the Druids had many functions in Celtic society, but what they're most well known for is their position as a holy man or woman within the tribe or Tuha. But to better understand the Druids and their traditions, it helps to understand the Celts in general. The Celts were not a race, but more of a culture, one that spread throughout Western Europe. Their artwork, for example, was free-flowing and abstract, thus reflecting their mystical conception of existence. It wasn't rigid and based in reality like the Greeks and Romans of the period. 
And one of the metaphysical traditions shared within Celtic culture was the cult of the head. It was believed that it was in the head that the soul of the individual resided. So, if you took someone's head, you also took dominion over their soul. Thus, the Celts were headhunters. And it was not uncommon for a family member of those whose head was taken to bargain for its return so they could release their loved one's soul. Remnants of this dark tradition of the cult of the head can still be found in the modern jack-o'-lantern. Think about that the next time you carve into a pumpkin with your kids. Now druids, when they were in the guise of mystical holy men, were very similar to the shamans in how they were the mediators between this world and the underworld, the world of the she, those not unlike elves or fairies. And it was on Samhain that the veil between this world and the others was thinnest, thus allowing those from the other realms to walk within the, this tri-dimensional existence. So it was common to leave out treats for the she-folk to keep them appeased. But the she were not the only ones who entered our world on that night. Those who also walked were the spirits of the dead, the dead who did not follow the path of the transmigration of the soul. So, to prevent from being taken away by the dead, one would dress as the dead. Because I've seen zombie movies and TV shows. One need not be a genius to fool them. So, my friends, there you have a very brief history of Samhain or Halloween. Now, there's much more to it than that, but me personally, I'm, I'm more drawn to the dark Celtic aspects of it. I'm into the Druids and the encounters one can have with those beyond the veil. So, do your research and attempt to celebrate Samhain and the traditional manners of the ancient Celts, if you will. But if you can, avoid the head hunting. Until next time.